Hello, I'm Steve Nunn, President and CEO of The Open Group. Welcome to Toolkit Tuesday, where we highlight the various components and leading experts of the Architects Toolkit, a collated portfolio of the most pertinent technology standards for enterprise architects. During the series, I'll be calling on a number of recognized experts who will bring their particular insights on how to most effectively use the various tools in the Architects Toolkit. We'll have a mix of interviews, panel sessions, and pre-recorded presentations along the way. While all standards of the Open Group are designed so they can be adopted independently of one another, the greatest value for an organization can be derived when they're used in unison. The sum of the parts should be greater than the whole. In the Architects Toolkit, we have collated a portfolio of the most pertinent ones for architects together, all in one place. For most of these tools, certification from the Open Group is also available, so practitioners can demonstrate that they have the skills required, and recruiters can take the guesswork out of the recruitment process, all backed up by our Open Badges program. Fads and fundamentals. If you hang around long enough in the world of EA, you will see the same questions come round time and time again. The only thing that changes is the name of the technology, the delivery approach taken, or the person asking it. Is it an age thing that project managers like police officers seem to get younger every year? And whilst it's not really fair to refer to all of these things as fads, it is very fair to say that EA transcends them. Whilst the size of data and volumes of transactions, the speed that projects work out all change, the fundamental truth is that you still have to check the viability, the integrity and extensibility of the decision making. It is true there's an ever increasing amount of things to stay on top of, but it's also wrong to think there was ever a time when we as EA could get, actually get into all of that detail all of the time. In truth, whisper it quietly, we never could quite get to that level of detail. We simply had to abstract and to simplify to survive. Fighting our natural curiosity was a pragmatism that meant we actually managed to get to sleep at the end of the day. That's possibly why an experienced EA doesn't get overexcited by a new trend or fad. It's possibly because they're looking at a repeating pattern. Thank you, Paul. Welcome uh, to Toolkit Tuesday Special Edition, everyone. I'm glad to have you with us. Thank you for taking the time out of your day, whatever time of day that is. Um, delighted to have you. And uh, my thanks as ever to um, Paul Homan um for his uh for his thoughts there of course yes don't be uh don't be panicked by the by uh new things um very true today um the pace of technology change and uh, all the things we're facing so uh, you've probably seen something like it before so especially you experienced eas out there anyway great to have you with us and uh today our main topic is is going to be uh in the healthcare uh, area, which is which is great to uh, to have some of the representatives from our healthcare forum uh, talking to us today, and I'll get to that in just a moment. But um, before then, just a reminder um, for those of you who are who are uh, joining us either for the first time or aren't familiar with the WebEx tool. Um, if you have questions for our speakers today, then please uh, try to use the Q and A channel for that, which you will find in by clicking the three dots in the bottom right hand corner of your screen if you uh, can't see it already. Um, please feel free to use the chat channel. Some people already are, which is great to see. We love to have you uh, interact and let us know where you're joining from uh, in the world. Very much a global audience at Toolkit Tuesday uh, that we're proud of. So uh, please do any any messages for others attending or to share, please put those in the chat and questions in the Q&A and I'll get to uh, get to those at the end of our presentation this morning. So uh, before we begin, one shameless plug, um, and I'll mention it again at the end, we have uh, one of our summits coming up. The Open Group Summit in Houston is at the end of this month, getting very close now, and it's uh, October the 28th to the 31st in Houston, Texas. It's an in-person event, uh, lots going on, uh, lots of different forums, almost like a gathering of the clans for the open group, different forums uh, and work groups. So uh, if you're uh, either in the area or able to get there, we'd love to see you there. More details on the website, of course. So. To today's uh, topic, and uh, that is the the work that our healthcare forum is is doing in healthcare value based architecture, and I won't steal their thunder, but uh, we have uh, three great um, three knowledgeable folks 
to talk about that today, um, since they're doing work. First is uh, Scott Sloan. Uh, Scott is CTO AI at Kindrel. He's an accomplished and visionary senior business and technology executive, known for his expertise in driving strategic decision making across healthcare organizations. With a passion for optimizing organizational performance, Scott has been a trusted partner to numerous Fortune 100 firms across payer, provider, and life sciences. His innovative strategies and ability to integrate diverse stakeholders have made him a catalyst for change, addressing the pressing challenges faced by today's leading organizations. Scott's president-elect for the Hims Bluegrass chapter and the chair of the Open Group Healthcare Forum, a longtime contributor to the Open Group too. So um, thank you, Scott. Great to have you back. Uh, with Scott as well is Alec Blair, lead advisor at Stealth Enterprise Architecture. Uh, Alec is passionate, a passionate IT professional who believes that enterprise architecture should help others be more successful. We hear here to that. He's contributed to the latest thinking around capability-based planning with the Open Group and the Business Architecture Guild, having co-authored no less than five business architecture guides that are now part of the TOGAF Standard 10th edition. He's currently the Enterprise Architect for Alberta Health Services within the Community Care Services IT portfolio. And uh, joining Scott and Alec is my colleague, Jason Lee, who is the Healthcare Forum Director at the Open Group. Uh, Jason has been the director now since 2014, so our 10th uh, anniversary of having you with us, Jason. And the forum's work on health information interoperability culminated in the selection of the Open Group as the sole steward of the US government's federal health information model, um, uh, FIM. So uh, welcome to all three of you. Glad to have you here. And uh, please tell us more about the uh, healthcare value-based architecture work you've been doing. So over to you. I think, Scott, you're uh, speaking first. Yeah, Steve, thank you so much for inviting the Healthcare Forum to speak at Toolkit Tuesday. I think our dialogue will both be interesting as well as insightful to the audience here. We'll start out and talk about how the open group standards can be applied within the industry setting of the healthcare ecosystem. And aligned with that, we'll talk through the framework that we have for the open value-based architecture that we call OVBA for healthcare. Aligned with that, then we will deep dive into an example of a use case within the emergency department. And then we'll come back and outline the future work that we'll be pursuing and aligned with that as well. Um, hopefully receive insights from the audience and take questions that come up. As we think about one of our goals, which is to help enterprise architects and analysts be able to achieve their business objectives utilizing the open value-based architecture, OVBA, for healthcare. What we've done is to be able to draw upon the open group standards to be able to achieve that. Pulling from TOGAF, for example, the business architecture components and use, utilizing Archimate to be able to drive some of the modeling being able to integrate and harmonize across these standards helps us to be able to support those constituents. For those of you who might not be broadly familiar with the healthcare ecosystem, this is a domain in which on average nations spend 10% of their gross domestic product. That is a huge amount across a very wide ecosystem. And from a healthcare forum perspective, we decided to focus in on the hospital across all of that. It's a domain in which patients and payers, pharmaceutical companies and providers all come together to be able to drive value to the patient and really represents a microcosm of the larger healthcare system. And it's within driving that value that they're able to achieve not only the greatest outcome for patients, but be are able to drive reimbursements across the ecosystem to be able to drive the long-term success. Jason? Thank you, Scott. I'm going to discuss 
two core principles that are foundational to the OVBA. They are related to one another, but it is important to keep them distinct. The first is the concept of value-based care, which is what this slide is about. And the second is the concept of person-centered health care, which I will talk about on the next two slides. So value-based health care is most simply expressed in the formula in the left-hand panel of this slide. Healthcare value equals healthcare quality divided by healthcare costs. So if quality goes up, but cost stays the same, value increases. If quality stays the same, but cost goes down, value increases. And uh, in the best of cases, value increases when quality goes up and cost goes down. This basic framework has emerged as a fundamental organizing principle in that very broad global healthcare landscape that Scott just talked about. And it applies to both delivery and the reimbursement of medical services. Value-based healthcare is the industry's response to its long-term twin problems of upwardly spiraling costs and the need for more and more widely used evidence-based treatment options. Now, the right-hand panel simply describes at a high level five key factors that play into the healthcare value equation. So better health outcomes, better patient experience, satisfaction measures, uh, better care coordination within the hospital and with outside uh, settings, um, data interoperability, which is what the FEM is all about, which uh, uh, Steve mentioned uh, at, in the lead in, and of course, lower costs. Moving to the next slide then, uh, this is really all about uh, that concept of person-centered care that um, I mentioned. And there are really two key players here, the person on the left in the blue and the hospital on the right in the green. And considered from the classic supply demand economic model perspective, the person is the consumer who drives the demand for services, and the hospital is the supplier of the services. Focusing in the middle panel of the slide, where the patient again is in blue, the hospital in green, in the top row we see this is about the person who seeks hospital services wanting to know, you know what, what is wrong with me. Um, the hospital performs an initial diagnosis to determine the patient's need for care. In the second row, if the hospital assesses there is a medical concern, the patient is gonna want an evidence-based assessment of what the problem is, which typically requires additional diagnostic testing. And in the third row, of course, the patient uh, will then want advice based on that testing that was done in the assessment. The hospital will provide that advice, which could be a behavioral modification, it could be a referral to another provider, or it could be some kind of an intervention or non-interventional treatment. And finally, in the fourth bottom row, if the patient wants to be treated by the hospital, then the hospital develops, you can see these three things, a treatment plan, will treat the patient, and then will transfer the patient to the next appropriate site of care, which could be home. And uh, the last slide I'm gonna present before kicking this over to Alec for our use case is uh, this discussion uh, about um, the person-centered healthcare concept uh, within this standard of the diagnostic therapeutic cycle. Uh, this DTC, as we call it, was introduced uh, from about a dozen years of work by our Dutch colleagues who developed their hospital reference architecture called the Zira. We, the Open Group Healthcare Forum and the Open Group translated uh, that architecture, extended it, published it in the library, and we have a set of reusable files on our website. The OVBA has adopted the diagnostic therapeutic cycle, and it's really critical in the red there at the bottom to 
appreciate that this uh, sequence of, of, of services applies to all clinical services within a hospital. And there's, there's some magic in that, but uh, no time really to discuss it at this point beyond that. So each step in the patient healthcare, uh, patient-centered healthcare journey just described on the previous slide is represented in this diagnostic therapeutic cycle in a format that we can apply to all value streams within the clinical care portfolio domains as Alec discusses next. The, thank you very much. The next few slides I'm gonna look at how we take and model and represent a business architecture for, for a hospital organization. Um, and the first thing is to come up with a template. Um, it was mentioned earlier that enterprise architects have patterns. These are the kind of, this is a kind of a pattern for a, a template to start helping you build out what your particular hospital organization structure might look like. And it's in uh, separated into different portfolios. In the top uh, corner in the left are three domain portfolios. So corporate services or back office. Clinical services, which are typically the services that are, are, are very patient facing and clinical support services, which may be patient facing um, and sometimes might be a little bit more hidden. Um, and those three domains uh, combine together to be able to actually enable the diagnostic therapy cycle. And they're gonna do that through both uh, digital and physical engagement channels, whether that's the hospital or whether it's a website or an app. Um, things like that, and then they're going to engage in the ecosystem of a variety of folks that are stakeholders within the way that, that are applicable for that particular hospital organization. And all of that needs to be um, enabled through uh, information management so that we're able to get information all the way from the back office out to the ecosystem and back in again through and, and interacting along the way uh, where, where at all possible. Um, so if, let's take it down to the next level. Let's actually try and model a fictitious hospital organization. And so here you can see that we've actually populated in the top left a number of business domains and clinical domains. Um, and it's important to understand that you know hospitals are complicated, right? Even though even within a hospital we're going to have um, inpatient services and outpatient services, and then a hybrid in between um, of, of, of uh, or an ambulatory and you know. Uh, services as well, and the clinical support services are going to be able to support those. And then we have our channels with our physical, uh, uh, like the patient's home increasingly, where we're doing virtual care. It could even be a, a warehouse or, or a pharmacy manufacturing plant. And then you've got on the right-hand side the ecosystem that we're trying to engage with. with. And then on, along the bottom are all of the key capabilities that we need for information management that are going to enable each, each domain. So this gives us a really nice high overview of what a particular hospital scope might be at a, at a, on a one page diagram. We really wanted to be able to do as architects, we really need to be able to understand that at, at a much lower level. And so we're gonna take a look at the emergency department, but we're only gonna suppose, focus right now on the value streams. Um, and so if you've read the business capability planning guide, um, this is taking an example now in a healthcare example where we're looking to understand what a health emergency department experience from a patient's perspective or a person's perspective um, is from when they walk into the emergency room and then go through each of the stages. And so you've got somebody walks in off, that's your trigger. I walk into the waiting room and I'm going to present myself at the admissions desk, depending on or possibly triage. And we're going to go from present and triage, assess, treat and transfer, which is the therapeutic cycle for this particular value stream for this particular domain. And then the biggest thing we want to try and do when you're describing your value stream is understand the value to the person who's receiving the, the, the is who's triggered and receiving the value right in this case it's the person who comes into the emergency department and so at the very bottom you can see values right first time first i have to present and i know they need to know why i'm there and then we get an initial understanding um, and they hopefully get a time estimate and then diagnosis etc but caught as well, we have goals and outcomes that the organization might be trying to do um, to measure a patient's progress through there or some of the organizational requirements. And those are represented in the in goals at the top. Outcomes might be actual measurements of wait time expectations between presentation and triage and treatment, um, which sometimes I know in, in the United States, especially that sometimes even advertised how much time the wait time might be. Um, so this gives us our motivation view of the value stream. And then we can layer on and do a capability map 
and even go beyond a capability and map and actually look at a value stream network. And so in this situation, we've got taken that motivation map and added business capabilities. But as important is we're starting to understand when a particular business capability is going to trigger a different value stream in a different domain, right? So if you're in an emergency department, you've got an order in the assessment stage where you might go to a lab, have to meet a, a lab test, or you might need a diagnostic image. In the treatment stage, you might have a medication order, which becomes something that is, as a pharmacy perspective is either dispensed from the pharmacy or possibly is an op, in an auto med cabinet so that you're then able to get the treatment that you need. And at the end of the value stream from an emergency department perspective, I'm gonna transfer you over to maybe to surgery or to inpatient or possibly back home so that you can then go and visit with your primary care. And from an enterprise architecture perspective, this value stream network and understanding the business capabilities is, is really quite important to be able to optimize where we need to, to try and uh, improve the value stream in the way it's delivering value. And so to really then span across the business architecture dimensions into the application and information architecture dimensions, we want to take it next to the business capability instance level. And so in this one, we've actually just taken one value stream stage at the very beginning, and we've broken each business capability into its constituent parts of people, tools, processes that are necessary to enable that particular business capability within this value streams context. And it's at this point from an enterprise architecture perspective, we actually can see all of the perspectives potentially um, of the architecture in the, biz in the context of the value and the value stream that's coming in. So this gives us our requirements from a value perspective, but possibly with the, with the goals. I have an application over here. I've got a business process. I have people who are interacting with that particular business capability, and I got some business objects like an identity card. And by having this perspective, it actually starts to allow us to then go and look at how we would look at the, the way that different applications are working, uh, how we're interacting with external stakeholder applications like insurances, how we're dealing with master data capabilities that are instantiated through an EMPI. And so this is the last step of a very uh, of taking your business architecture, setting your domain context as a business architecture so that we can actually improve the domain di driven design um, from an applications perspective, because now we understand the application portfolio required in this particular instance, just to instantiate this particular value stage. But if you go through and map all of the rest of them, now you understand the application portfolio that's necessary and sufficient to actually enable this value stream. So this is what we're hoping to uh, elaborate in the standard that's going forward. I hope this brief walkthrough of business capability planning has been useful and I'll hand it back to Jason. And Jason, you're on mute. Thank you. Uh, so what's up next? Uh, first, we're going to advance the development of an open value-based architecture for healthcare. We call that the OVBA. Um, we're going to produce more use cases. Uh, you just saw one uh, based on um, the patient who walks into the emergency department. Uh, all those domains in that one page map, um, each one of those can be mapped as well. Those could be clinical or non-clinical areas, and this will be based on the uh, experience of the members of the forum. We're gonna publish in the coming year, the open group OVBA healthcare snapshot. Um, and then uh, six months plus after that, we're gonna publish the standard. And then we're really going to focus on the hospitals and lots of those other organizations in the ecosystem and the various target groups within those um, environments uh, within the global healthcare ecosystem. We're fortunate to have members in the forum from uh, far and wide. So thank you very much. And back to you, Steve. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Um, great overview, and and you know, there's it's it's great to see uh, standards of the open group being applied for uh, real good, and uh, the healthcare industry is certainly one that can uh, can use some enterprise architecture uh, uh, techniques and uh, business architecture, certainly. So um, 
uh, the, I love the love the start there about about value based. Um, you know, when the when the quality it goes up or stays the same and the cost goes down, that's what we're all looking for, obviously. And the, the global point you made there at the end, Jason, is important because, uh, as I said at the beginning, we've got a global audience here, and I think um, the very best standards are those that are applicable uh around the world and uh and not just either regionally or nationally but uh obviously they're they're influenced by whoever creates them and it's uh it's great to see different perspectives and uh and different uh geographies being uh, being part of the work here so thank you um let's go with uh with a question you focused in on on uh on one obviously use case um but are there non-clinical uh, hospital applications for the OVBA? Yes, um, a, a fairly important one, for example, is a health is your um, care scheduling application, right? We've got to be able to come up with unit schedules so that we've staffed the emergency department. We need on call schedules in case we get overloaded and we need to pull in extra ones. And so for sure, all of the back office applications are going to contribute um, to enabling the value streams that across the across the hospital. Um, and so um, we may not go into a detailed standard on HR processes and other things that are start kind of ubiquitous on how you hire people and do other things like that, um, but certainly needing to understand how uh, back office op applications are going to be a, a critical integration point in value streams, as including in the United States more particularly, and other people where, where the end of a hospital encounter is going to result in a, in an insurance claim and, and billing information. So, yeah, it's all it, the ecosystems all intertwined. <laughs> Great. Um, a question question just came in. I mean, I, 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 I uh, had a had a question to ask you about other other uh, health care uses for this, but uh, a question just come in about uh, firstly, thanking you for your presentation, but also, you know, um, Love the approach. Could this standard, do you think, be applied to other services such as law enforcement or policing? It's a no, great sir. question. I, I'd love to take that one if I if I may. Absolutely, Jason. Go ahead. You know, value and that value formula exists in every industry. Um, and one of our colleagues, I'll give you a concrete uh, answer to that question. Um, one of our one of our uh, Call it, former colleagues uh, who just moved from the UK to Australia has uh, found that in the uh, the criminal justice system um, there is a similar pattern of, of value, if you will, in that if you look at the diagnostic therapeutic cycle, which has this you know you, you enter a system and then you you get a diagnosis, so. The analogy being the penal system, criminal justice system. So you enter into the system. You, there's a sentencing process, and then the stay. You know that um, that's supposed to have a rehabilitative function. So you can see how this follows the clinical um, framework. So that that would just be a quick a quick response. Maybe others, um, either of my other colleagues, have an example as well, or or Steve, if you want to take another question. Yeah, if, I, if, think, uh, I think while we're applying it to healthcare, uh, it's it's applicable. This is a it's a business architecture framework. So yes, you could absolutely decompose it into any other industry. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No, that, that's that's it's a great question. Thank you, and uh, and a, and a great answer. Um. So. Um. For right now, maybe it goes to uh, to other uses and and all of those. But for right now, um, maybe Scott, you can take this one uh, first. Maybe who's the target audience for the OVBA standard, as as we've as we're aiming it right now? As we think, who it would be most applicable for? Um, we feel that enterprise architects and those that work within the analysis domain within companies are the ones that would get the greatest use of it. As we think about the broad use of it um, and the need to be able to drive business value, though we see the applicability, as Alec has pointed out, in building these frameworks both into the teams that are responsible for implementing some of that capabilities as well. Um, because it is a business architecture framework to communicate upwards within organizations to the executives 
So although there's a strong core who would be the primary users of it, the business architecture becomes a communication tool that really can be used throughout the organization. Right, right. And, and as we've heard, maybe other organizations too, uh, mm -hmm. outside the current target uh, target audience. But uh, it's great to see these, uh, the, these things coming together. But uh, gentlemen, we are at the uh, end of our time. We try to... Uh, uh, respect the uh, the audience's time and of course yours but um, this is a great uh, toe in the water on this and I'm, I'm sure you've uh, piqued the interest of of those who uh, have watched this live and those who will uh, look at the recordings of it uh, uh, in a time zone more uh, convenient for them so thank you all for joining us today um, uh, Alex Scott and Jason and uh, we appreciate your time thank you thank you so um, that is just about wrapping it up. Just to say, we will have uh, another special edition of Toolkit Tuesday, um, which will be on November 12th. And uh, we're going to uh, switch topics then to strategic alignment with Archimate and Open Standards. So Archimate is a modeling language standard of the Open Group. And to uh, to do that, uh, I have two of my colleagues, uh, Sonia Gonzalez, who is the uh, manager of the digital uh, our uh, portfolio of digital open standards here at the open group and kelly cannon who is the forum director for the archimate forum so please join us on uh, november 12th um, for our next talk at tuesday special edition those of you who can join us in houston please do uh, october 28th the 31st in houston i hope to see some of you there and uh, if any of you are there that are on on this broadcast today, come and say hi. I was on the healthcare uh, healthcare forum um, broadcast of Toolkit Tuesday. Love to hear that. So, meanwhile, please stay safe wherever you are in the world, and uh, thank you for joining Toolkit Tuesday. Goodbye. <laughs>